What's up guys and welcome back to the Chaos Gym. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about a the Brazil metagame. No, I haven't, no, I haven't done one of these in a while. I've just been kind of, I guess, slacking because the format seems pretty defined. School, uh, haven't been to a big tournament in a while. It's been like three weeks now, almost. Now, so it's been a while um, in the grand scheme of things. Um, but this is going to be like a Brazil slash... Early Virginia uh, metagame predictions, because um, whatever happens in Brazil will determine things moving forward into Brazil for myself and probably many others. So, sorry, I just have my Facebook open, I want to close that. <clears throat> so first off, let's talk about a couple of decks that I think are very hard to ignore heading into Brazil. Uh, for those of you watching at home, for those of you um, traveling to the event, I know you've got plenty of time, so check it out, watch it uh, on your way to the uh plane, whatever. The biggest deck, I think, to be worried about is Turbo Dark. Uh, Turbo Dark is almost certainly um, the best deck, or close to the best deck right now. Um, playing double hex, um, two to three switching cards, like an Olympia. The deck is just powerful. Time in and time out since its inception, it's been taking consistent placements at top regionals, piloted by good players. And now you're going to an event where a majority of the good players will be there. It's a world's level, effectively a world's level event. Um, so you've got all these top level players, and I would be shocked if Turbo Dark didn't uh, break into the top eight. Uh, two, I, I would like, I would literally think like two or three of them would break in. Like it happened at the last Intercontinental. It'll happen. Um, like, even in a Decidueye-dominated metagame, where the deck wasn't teched for Decidueye, it still managed to make top four. Like, moving forward, like, it's it's the deck that should be countered. Um, don't know how exactly you do that, but... Um, Turbo Dark's very good. Um, it's going to be a fallback for a lot of players, and I think it's a very strong play. The second strongest play, I think, is Mega Mewtwo Garbodor. Um... And I say that because Mega Mewtwo Garbodor does beat Turbo Dark, and it is an overpowering, overbearing deck. And if you can get through the past the fact that it's a little clunky, it is probably the best deck in the format. Damage change is absolutely ridiculous, and it's just all in all one of those decks that when it sets up and starts rolling, you can't really stop it. Um, and then, yeah, it's just it's not a deck that I would I like to play. But, uh, you know, it's just one that I won't dismiss as bad. I know uh, a friend of mine, Ryan Sablehouse, and Travis Numbless, they both really like the deck, and um, it has merit. It's succeeded multiple times, so it it, it does beat the Situate Plume, too, if you put in a Wob or two, and then you just, like, set up your guard, but then you win the game. And it's, it's got a good matchup against that. Third best deck, third and fourth are going to be in no order. But um, third, fourth will be Decidueye Plume and Volcanion. Um, Decidueye Plume, overbearing. You just get your turn one plume out, you win the game. Uh, it absolutely dominated Australia. And then moving into the next standard event, everyone thought it just wouldn't make an impact. And then eight, I think eight of the top 32 decks were Decidueye Plume in Utah, which is crazy to think about. Um, granted, uh, only two made top eight, which is... A little shocking considering eight made it to day two. That's a perfect number, but um, perfect like ratio there if you want to say. But um, the deck hasn't changed much. It's literally the same deck and it does the same thing. So it's still good. It's still good. Uh, and then Volcanion. New Mike Nui took it to a win. Um, list is pretty standard. Uh, you throw in, you got the added benefit of a Salamence to deal with the Turbo Dark Ride matchup and. If if you want if you want a Salamence you have a Salamence to deal with the Turbo Darkrai matchup and assist that uh, Volcanion if you don't overbench just to drive Plume is an, an awful matchup um, Mewtwo Garb even saw Garb two of your worst matchups both kind of don't exist right now um, <clears throat> we thought maybe they'd be making a comeback after Puerto Rico with even saw Garb coming back into the meta but that hype just died um, there was one even saw Garb that made day two in Utah. Um, and I believe they made top 16, but, yeah. Other than that, Dark Tina, uh, if the players expect a metagame dominated by DCEs and Megadex, Tina becomes very, very powerful, 
Um, Vespaquin could be a sleeper pick. I would not play it into this meta game because Decidueye Plume seems very good, and playing into a Decidueye Plume meta with Vespaquin is suicide. You just you just can't win. That matchup is near. Like I've tried two OBS, I've tried everything. It's not good. Um, it's better to improve your other matchups than Decidueye Plume, and in that regard, you're losing Decidueye Plume regardless. And then Volcanion and Darkrai become 50-50s. Um, and taking a 50-50 versus two of the big three, and then an auto loss versus one of the big three, is pretty unsavory to picking a deck. Um, other than that, I think what other what other solid decks? Quad Lapras, I think, is actually took a pretty decent play going into this. Like Quad Lapras, like if you can get it to beat Turbo Dark consistently, you should be able to like do well at this tournament because like Dissidue Plume, my feel is going to show up in numbers, and Quad Lapras should beat that. Um, like a 60-40, I think. Um, so, yeah. And then, other than that, I believe... What are, like, strong decks right there? That, um... Scizor, I guess, could be... No, no, don't play Scizor. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Mega Gardevoir, that's one. Uh, Mega Gardevoir um, kind of disappeared, I guess, off of the face of the earth after the last couple of tournaments. <laughs> Don't know why. I guess because Mewtwo is not as popular. Um, it does have a like a decent uh, Decidueye Plume matchup if you uh, play the three hex version that Jimmy Pendarvis and Brad Curcio piloted. Uh, you can find their lists on Brad's Facebook or um, one of the articles they wrote. Um, that list seems to have a pretty good Decidueye Plume matchup, so it's like not bad. And I think like it goes even versus Turbo Dark, so it's like not a bad deck to play into that meta. Um, on the same token, Mega Ray Quaza, um, might be a very good play for this tournament, because the Sidroid Plume should lose to Mega Ray Quaza, as should Turbo Darkrai, as should Volcanion if they don't play Salamence. Um, so taking a win versus the three big decks is pretty alluring, so Mega Ray Quaza seems like a very, very strong play heading into this tournament. But on the same token, Mega Ray Quaza is also very, very clunky, and, you know, it's a Mega deck that requires three energies to set up. And take it in a full bench, and you've got a bunch of stuff just sitting on your, um, uh, yeah, so. And then, um, that pretty much, like, covers the majority of the decks. I expect Brazil, I think they hit their cap already, um, which was either 630 across all divisions or 630 masters individually. Because if it's 630 masters, it's going to be a pretty big event, which is going to be refreshing because the past two internationals have been. Um, small. They've been relatively small, and um, but they have been high in competition. They've been high in competition, but small tournaments. Um, like you look at the people who made day two, and those are all just like big names. Um, worlds, like multiple worlds competitors. You've got like, I think in the top thirty-two, lots like at the, in Australia, there was like twenty or so people who were like either qualified for worlds or like on track for qualifying for worlds. So you'll see a majority of these people at worlds. Um, yeah, and this is like the last, um, this isn't the last tournament in this format for standard because we'll have Virginia, which is the final standard tournament with this set, uh, big tournament with this set, uh, this this rotation, um, and then we'll have Toronto, which is expanded, and then everything, not everything, but a majority of things will shake up the moment the new set drops for Seattle because Field Blower makes a huge impact and Tapu Lele makes a huge impact. Those two cards by themselves are game breaking in my opinion. And um, not not to mention Choice Band, not to mention Aqua Patch, um, Tapu Fini, all these like cards. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of fun stuff coming out in the new set that's going to change up the entire game. So while you might think our meta game's gotten boring and kind of stale, which kind of has, but we are in a cyclical rotation of standard, which is also healthy. There's no one deck that dominates. It's not like Guardi Galley used to be. Now we're in a cyclical format, giving it so the meta is changing. Not day by day, but like tournament by tournament, you see different decks at the top. Decidueye Plume um, was the dominant deck at the last tournament. This one was Turbo Dark Ride at Utah. And the following one, it might be Mega Ray Quaza. Like, we don't know. And like, it'll be interesting to see how Brazil shapes up. I will be watching from home. Um, you guys can be sure to check it out um, moving forward. And 
I will link the description in the below. Uh, I think I don't have the Twitch link. I don't think it's not up yet. But as soon as that's up, I'll make a, uh, like a small like 30 second video of just the link. So you guys can check it out uh, for everyone who's following from home. Um, other than that, um, there will be some big announcements coming up uh, with the Chaos Gym. Um, probably in the next day or two. Um, so be on the lookout there for that. That'll be pretty cool. I'm very excited for those. Um, Grafton will be back to a regular streaming, uh, streaming schedule. Uh, once his dad gets back from out of town, he's got to hop out of this furniture store. And we will have our 24-hour stream in 10 days on April 29th. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to start plugging that as soon as possible. So um, come drop by. You don't have to donate. Uh, you can just come hang out for a little bit. We're going to do stretch goals, the whole nine yards, like somebody eats a pepper. Um somebody bleaches their hair like i don't know like we're we're not creative right now um like if you donate x amount of money like someone will play like x deck at like a league challenge or something um like i'll play noivern do it i'll i'll do noivern again um like it'll, it'll we'll just have we'll have fun with it we'll do 24 hours straight of just either with we'll a pokemon into other games like we'll have um we'll all be in one location so we can do like smash for a little bit we could do like um like, we can, like, stream us playing Catan or, like, other board games and just having a good time. So, um, on that note, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I know I rambled a little bit on because I haven't done an update video in a while or one of these in a while. So, I am slacking. I understand. I'm sorry. Um, finals are coming up, so I've been a little busy on my end. But I will try to pump out some more content um, this weekend while Brazil is going on because I will be doing nothing but watching Brazil probably and studying. So it'll be a very boring weekend for me and exciting because I'll be watching Brazil, uh, which you guys should be too. So uh, thank you. Good luck. And if you have a league cups, whatever, good luck with those too.